morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to this week's Let's Talk Dairy. Uh, today, I'm delighted to have Deirdre on the line with me to talk about clover. And as I said in the tweet the other night, LED is telling us that the grass growth is going to pick up dramatically in the next number of days. And I think we can see that already, even in, from yesterday's what, what was a lovely day. Um, there was a real turnaround in grass growth, I think, from what I could see anyway. So it's a great opportunity now to look at the the big the next big step that we're all expected to take, which is incorporation of clover into our swords. So some people might think that this is new information or new a new area, but Deirdre has been researching this area for a good number of years and has a lot of knowledge in this area and has been doing it quite successfully. So Deirdre is going to be able to give us a quick synopsis of why we should be doing it. And then I suppose we want to really focus on how we're going to go about it is the main thing for is the main piece of information that people are looking for. So as I said, it's a major part of our sustainability team. It looks like it's very likely that we're going to have a reduction in the nitrogen allowances that were allowed on farm for the coming year um, through the department regulations. And that means that we have to start making moves to offset that reduction by incorporating clover into the farm. So many people have tried this in the past and possibly haven't had great success with it. And, and I suppose once bitten, twice shy is, is, some of the, is some of what you would hear coming back from people. But we really will have to take this step. And I suppose it's just following the, the chain of command, really, Deirdre, in one sense, in terms of establishing it. So grazing management is one of the key things in, in it. Uh, and I suppose that would be quite different now compared to what it would have been when uh, the original efforts to establish cover would have been introduced. So I won't take any more from your presentation and saying what I'm saying, and I'll let you go through the detail. And as always, folks put the questions in through the, the Q&A there, and I'll put them to Deirdre as we go along. So thanks, Deirdre. Thanks, George. Okay, so good morning, everybody. And Stuart, thanks for the invitation. Um, so look, as Stuart said, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about establishing grass white clover swords. Um, uh, clover looks like, you know, we're, we're all going to have to have some clover on our farms um, as um, things are progressing now, particularly if we're going to have caught in nitrogen. Um, and, you know, we've a good body of work here in Moor Park over the last eight years on the Moor Park farm here going into our ninth year where we've compared grass only getting 250 kilos of nitrogen. So our standard type system with grass uh, white clover getting 150 kilos of nitrogen, both stocked to 2.74 cows per hectare. And, you know, in terms of herbage production, we're not seeing any reduction in herbage production. Uh, with the clover and the reduced nitrogen. So the nitrogen is, is making up for that 100 kilo reduction in fertilizer. And you know, that's actually a 40% reduction in fertilizer, you know. Um, there, at the moment, I suppose the, the Green Deal target is a 20% reduction uh, in fertilizer. What that's going to translate to for Ireland, we, we're still not sure, but you know, certainly clover offers us huge opportunities in terms of reducing fertilizer nitrogen. Um, and, you know, not only is it, does it allow us to reduce fertilizer nitrogen, but there's also an animal production benefit um, in terms of milk solids production per cow. So here in Moor Park, you know, over that eight year period, we're seeing somewhere between 20, 25 kilos, depending on the year. But on average, 20 kilos of milk solids per cow per year, um, greater than in the grass only system. So look, um, just one uh, slide around the benefits of white clover, which I've which I've touched on already. Um, but you know, when you add clover into the sward, regardless of the fertilizer application rate, um, there is generally an increase in herbage production seen. So it can be small, maybe 500 kilos, but on average across nitrogen fertilizer rates, it's up to around one and a half tons of dry matter per hectare. And in Clannacilty, um, uh, Brian McCarthy would have found an average um, at the 250 kilos of nitrogen, he found an average of uh, 1.5 tonnes of dry matter per hectare increase in herbage production. In terms of milk solids production, I've already touched on this, but anywhere between 20 and 50 kilos. That's what we found between the Moor Park work and the Clannacilty work. And I suppose a really important part here, if we're, if we're um, talking about clover in the context of um, fertiliser, is that uh, clover is a legume, which means it can fix atmospheric nitrogen and make it available for plant growth. So it's available not only for the growth of the clover, but also for the accompanying species in the sward, which I suppose we're talking about really uh, is perennial ryegrass in our, in our grass white clover swards. 
But we do need about 20% average sward clover content to see these animal and sward production benefits. So I suppose what we really want to talk, to talk about today is how do we go about getting clover into the sward? Okay, so we're really going to focus on the, the management around sowing clover, be it reseeding or over sowing, but we can touch a bit on management if there's any questions on that as well. Okay, so you know, getting clover established on your farm, I suppose there's four key steps here, all right? So you have, you need to select the paddocks you're going to sow, okay? Um, and that's going to be based around soil fertility, perennial ryegrass content and weed content. We'll go into a bit more detail in these in a few minutes. You want to be selecting medium leaved white clover cultivars for cattle grey swords. And the best time of year to be over sowing is from now until kind of the middle of June. Okay, so weather conditions are improving now and soil temperature is, in, is increasing. So, you know, good time to be thinking about um, over sowing and reseeding. And then post sowing management is really important in terms of once the, once the seed germinates and it starts to establish, well, your post sowing management is going to have a big role in how that clover persists. Okay, so a little bit going a little bit deeper into um, the selection of the paddocks. Look, whether you're re reseeding, full reseed, or you're over sowing. Soil fertility is hugely important. So we know perennial ryegrass needs good soil fertility. White clover absolutely needs uh, good uh, soil fertility. Uh, white clover is far more sensitive to soil fertility than um, perennial ryegrass is. So you do need to be at your index three for P's and K's minimum and soil pH of 6.3 or greater. Um, White clover doesn't like acidic soils. It's not going to persist very well in those. Um, and then the next thing is, you know, selecting your paddock. So if you want to over sow, um, and you probably all have paddocks that are suitable on your farm right now for over sowing, they're going to be ones with uh, high perennial ryegrass content, open sward. What I mean by open is that it doesn't have a dense butt in the sward, as in it's not a paddock that's there for a long time and you know, there's a lot of weed grasses at the base of it. So we want it open. So, you know, a more recent reseed that you that you um, applied weed control to. Um, and the reason being, you know, if, if they're recently reseeded, your soil fertility is probably good in those. And you will have used your soil, uh, your post sowing, uh, your, sorry, your post emergent spray on those. So your weed content will be low. So that means you have a high perennial ryegrass content and you have um, an open sward in the sense that you can get seed to soil contact with, um, with um, the clover seed. Then if you're doing a full reseed, you're probably going to pick your more poorly performing paddocks. And these are likely the ones that have a low perennial ryegrass content. Um, and you know, you can use pasture base to help you select your paddocks in terms of which ones are the lowest performing on the farm. And then in terms of weed control, um, before you over sow, you need to do your weed control. So if you have a relatively suitable sward, but you have a lot of weeds in it, best to do your weed control now and then over sow once you have your weeds dealt with. You need to be aware though that some of the, um, the grassland herbicides have a withdrawal period of up to four months um, that you can't clo sow clover until four months have passed after treatment. So you need to do that as early as possible in the year because you're going to be getting much later with over sowing and success with over sowing declines the later we are in the year. Or do your weed control now and have your, have your swords cleaned up now and then go in and over sow um, as early as you can next year, sometime in April. If you're reseeding, full reseed, you know, burn off with your glyphosate um, before, before you cultivate and your post-emergent spray is really important. Okay, then, you know, right, you have your sward ready, whether you're over sowing it or you're reseeding it, now you need to pick your cultivars. So medium-leaved cultivars, white clover cultivars, are most suited for um, cattle gray swards. Um, and every year, the Department of Ag publishes the recommended list, which you'll know because it's where you'll find the PPI in your perennial ryegrass cultivars. But they also have the white clover cultivars there. So look, I've just taken um, the part of the table with the, um, with the medium-leaved cultivars on it. And you can see at the moment what's available in terms of medium-leaved. You've Chieftain Body, Iona, Crusader and Aberhurled. Um, and in Moor Park, we've actually used all of those in various paddocks. Then when time, when, when do you oversaw, when do you recede? Okay, so it's, it, 
far when you have white clover in the sward it's pretty much the same whether you're over sowing or you're reseeding okay so you're better off going kind of the april may june period reasons being soil temperature is still on an increasing plane generally soil moisture deficit isn't um isn't a problem particularly if you're april and may um, some might argue we might be in a little bit of bother this year with, with um, soil moisture, given that we've had a very dry um, April. But in general, April, May, June um, are the best times in terms of temp soil temperature and soil moisture. But really important as well is there's plenty opportunity to graze your new reseeds or your over sown swards um, between when they're sown and closing in the autumn uh, for the winter. So, you know, you're getting a good number of grazings in, you're getting you're giving that clover plant every chance to establish and to start to develop stolons. Um, and then you also, when you um, redo, this is just for the, for reseeds, but this is, you know, you have the most opportunity to get out post-emergence spray the earlier you sow in the year. So, so you know yourself, if you're, go, if you're reseeding in, in August, your opportunity for post-emergence spray, the window there can, can disappear very fast if you have wet weather, our, our poor soil conditions. And Deirdre, that stolen formation is critical to the long-term establishment of yes. that. Yes, George, if, we, if, if so, when the clover plant starts, you know, the first three months it forms kind of um, a rosette. So it looks very small in the sward and it's very much confined around where that seed was sown. But after about three months, it starts to, to develop, to, it starts to branch and develop stolons and so on. But there's there's another phase then where it takes somewhere between 18 months and two years for the plant to be in in the um, in the phase where you know we call it the normal clover growing phase or the sto the sorry yeah the clonal phase. Um, so between about three months and 18 to 24 months, the plant is going through the expansion phase um, and it's starting to send out stolons it's starting to branch it's starting to basically it's starting to spread out in the sward and it's really important during that phase or that period that those swards are well grazed so that there's light getting down to the base of the sward for stolon production and the clover isn't getting shaded out by the grass because if it does um, there's not going to be a lot of photosynthesis going on in the clover plant because light simply isn't getting to the leaves um, and it's not going to um, have the energy to produce um, to produce new branches and new stolons. Okay, and uh, the last point I have here then is following on from that, Stuart. So it's all about the post sowing management. What do you do? So you have the seed sown, you've closed the gate now, and you've walked away for a little while to leave the to leave your seed establish uh, to germinate and and start to establish. So on reseeds, post emergence spray must be clover friendly. Um, and I know this has been an issue and it's, it's a concern this year, but um, Clover Max will be available uh, from May onwards, probably mid to late May. So we will have a, post, a Clover friendly post emergence spray available this year. And it's really important that, you know, you do get in and you do get that post emergence spray and it's your, it's your best chance for weed control in a Clover sward. Um, first grazing at a low cover. So, you know, around a thousand kilos so like it's light but it's as soon as the sward is fit to be grazed same as in a perennial ryegrass sward if you can pull pull the tillers and they stay in the soil then it's um it's fit to be grazed so you need to go in at that low cover and you know that's got to do with um allowing light to get down to the base of that of the sward and you know that works for perennial ryegrass tillering and for clover production in in a grass clover sward so it's beneficial for both both species in terms of um, if you're over sowing, there's going to be, um, if you've over sowed, you don't want to get a really high cover building up on the sward because you're going to end up with shading and you're going to shade out that young clover plant that's growing. So for both uh, reseeding and over sowing, try and get in there around a thousand kilos of dry matter per hectare. Very low cover, I appreciate, but it's, it's worth it in terms of getting the sward established. And after that, you need to be going into those swards regularly. Don't be leaving the covers get over 12, 1400 kilos at the most. So look, in your over sown paddocks, you're probably going to have to skip in the same as you would in a new reseed where you want to get a good establishment. Graze down to four centimetres. Um, it's worth reducing the fertilizer nitrogen for one to two rotations after over sowing. Uh, again, to give clover a chance so that you're not shading it up with the, with the more mature grass. 
clean off well in the autumn, get down to three and a half centimetres. Same reasons that you want uh, for in a grass sward. You want light down to the base of the sward for the tiller production or for the stolon production. Um, and then graze as soon as you can in the spring, particularly the newer swards. Um, again, it's just to take off any heavy cover and give the plant plenty of opportunity in the spring to, um, to establish um, more clover plants through stolon production um, and also not to shade out the shade out the, the new clover plants. So Deirdre, so, the, um, we would have spoken about it there now yesterday as well, like just the, the timings that you engage in Moor Park. Now obviously it's all dependent on growth phases etc and how fast seeds establish etc but like I, I said to you yesterday generally I think we probably tend to be spraying at a commercial level when we're grazing it here in Moor Park so we've already been yeah. in with the spray at that stage so just go through the time phases that you kind of use. On yeah, the farm so- here. So with um, in a reseed, we probably go in five to five to six weeks after sowing, Stuart, with our um, spray, and then we we'll graze it a week later. We we'll graze it as soon as we can after we put out the spray. So you know, you know, you probably want to be going a little bit earlier than maybe you think you need to um, in terms of getting spray if you want to get those low covers grazed and look. If you've gone to the expense of, of reseeding or over sowing, you might as well get the benefit of the money you've spent in terms of that and get your clover established. So, you know, you really want to be keeping an eye on the swards at about five weeks. Look, in a cold year, it might, it might be six weeks. You know, you do need seedling um, weeds. So docks is generally what, what we would be spraying for. Um, you do need those to be actively growing and you do need them to be there. Um, you need to be able to see them because if they're not actively growing, they're not going to, uh, you're not going to be able, the, sorry, the post-emergent spray isn't going to have any effect on them because they're not there. But generally five to six weeks, George, you'd want to be going in with the spray. And the other thing, I suppose, with the clover safe sprays as well, like they're probably, the window of opportunity isn't as good as it would be with the non-clover safe sprays. So it's even more critical that people spray that yeah. bit quicker, like. Exactly, really important to get the the weeds at the seedling stage. Once they start to like establish properly, the, your, your spray is going to be less effective. Yeah. Uh, and then as the sward establishes, your opportunity for, for spraying is much, much uh, reduced. So you need to get in um, as soon as you can, basically. So somewhere around five to six weeks um, and you should, get, you should get a good kill then. So that's what we do here. And we, we generally have... Um, good weed control in those paddocks George. Yeah, yeah, there is definitely. Um and in far, in terms of the we'll say you said it already, but just like I suppose to get it into people's heads in relation to normal reseeding, not to mind over sowing or reseeding with clover and, and incorporate it into it as well. You're literally only jumping into the paddock and clipping it off. You might only get one grazing off of it for that first grazing and you're not going to get three grazings off the paddock. No. Like. No. Yeah. So you want to get in and get out. Yeah. No, because the longer you're in there, the more treading is going on in the paddock as well, and that can damage the young plants. So you want to, you want to get in, clean it off, and get out as fast as you can. So you know, and you do need to be a little bit conscious of, of the weather. So if it's going to pour in, you wouldn't you, you know you hold <laughs> off for a day or two. Um, but you know, when you go in at those low covers, Stuart, you do get them grazed off quickly. Yeah. Um, and you know that has big benefits, whether it's just grass, a grass only swarger after sowing or whether it's a grass white clover sward. You know, it really helps the swards to, to tiller and it really helps the clover to establish. Very good. Excellent. So the nitrogen element then of what you're saying, we'll say for the post sowing, is that for the over sowing and the, the reseed? Uh, well, remember, if you do full reseed, your, your clover or your grass part of the sward is very hungry for nitrogen, so you do need to feed it. Um, it's more so for the over sowing, Stuart, okay. to reduce the clover. Uh, sorry, the nitrogen, certainly for the first uh, rotation after, or the rotation in which you do the over sowing, just to keep the grass a little bit checked. But you know, if you if you have a high demand for grass on the, on the farm, you're probably going to be going around the farm 18 to 21 days anyway. So, you know, if you have a high demand for grass and you do need to put out the fertilizer, you can do that once you're hitting uh, the next grazing at, a, at 12 to 1400 pre-grazing herbage mass. So, okay. you know, the clover isn't, doesn't start fixing nitrogen until somewhere around 12 to 18 months after it's sown. And, you know, clovers, like any other plant, it does need some nitrogen for growth. So it will use what's supplied with the fertilizer or what's mineralized in the soil um, to help it grow and establish. 
So, you know, you have to take into consideration what grass demands are on your, on your farm. Okay. So there's just a question there in relation to the cover max being available now. Is it going to be, is it sanctioned? It's more or less being sanctioned as of today so that the merchants will be able to have it within the next couple of weeks. Yeah. So it will be available from mid-May. It, it will be available sometime in May, Stuart, probably um, middle to end of May. But look, if you're planning on reseeding now, that timing works perfect yeah. um, in terms of it being available. Yeah, very good. And I suppose... Um, I suppose, is there any advice around the, the whole nitrogen fertilizer piece? Obviously, we're sowing clover to reduce the nitrogen use into the future. But like you said there now, that the, the fixation doesn't really happen for the next 12 months. So you're reducing it now for the first two rotations post, especially in the over scenario. But are you going back to normal then for the rest of the year? And it's next year that you're expecting it to <coughs> start having its, doing its thing in terms of nitrogen fixation then like? Yeah, so again, Stuart, you have to weigh up, you know, the demands on the farm in terms of uh, what the demand for grass is. Um, what we, we have done both here, we've gone back to almost normal fertilizer and we've gone straight with 150 kilos of nitrogen from sowing. Certainly you will need, um, you know, dep again, depending on your stocking rate and your demand, you probably will need to go back for the rest of the year to relatively normal fertilizer. And definitely in the spring, you're going to go with what we call normal fertilizer. But, you know, if you sow now by next summer, you will be able to reduce fertilizer. OK, you might be reducing by 100, by 100 kilos, but you can be reducing it by uh, around 50, 25 to 50 kilos of nitrogen next summer. And then you can come back. So, you know, that would be aiming for maybe 200 kilos per hectare next year. And you can drop it a bit more than the, the following year, you know, if you're confident in your swords. Um, and you're not going to be dropping fertilizer, reducing fertilizer rather than dropping it until kind of May time onwards. That's what that's the way we operate here as well. You know, we put the same amount of nitrogen and on the grass only in the grass clover swards up until May. And it's from then on that we reduce the fertilizer. So we're saving the 100 kilos from now on, basically. And that's what Brian McCarthy is doing in um, in Clannacilty as well. OK, so you know, how do you drop the fertilizer then in the mid-season? So look, in our research work, we, we've gone with a small amount of nitrogen in every rotation, so around nine kilos of, of nitrogen fertilizer. Um, I know that is more challenging at farm level because that's a, that's a small amount of fertilizer we're putting out. Um, in the new study that I've just started this year in Moore Park, we're going to compare what we've been doing for the last number of years uh, with a different regime where we're going to be skipping nitrogen every second rotation in the summer. Okay, the reason we're doing that is, look, that's probably what's more feasible at farm level, but we yeah. do need to see, does it influence or impact on herbage production um, in the summer and then on herbage quality, which would subsequently um, impact milk production. But I, I would say, you know, um, if, if farmers are confident of their swards, that's one option to do is to is to skip uh, a round of nitrogen. If you're going to do that, probably July time is the best time to be skipping because you should have you know any any surplus bales that you need you know for for feeding in case of a drought or early in the spring or whatever. You should have your bales made at that stage. Um, you know, in a normal year when we've warm weather and moisture um, available in the soil, there's mineralization occurring. So there is nitrogen circulating in the soil and then you, you'll have your clover, um, you know, from a year in, will be starting to fix nitrogen as well and making it available. So you have a lot of things feeding in there to, um, to the kind of July, June, July period in terms of reducing fertilizer. And I suppose with the, with the, I suppose uh, there's going to be a, an uptake in hopefully this year in the in the establishment of clover on farm. So next year, like the, the fertilizer trial that you're talking about for this year is going to be important. Do you think you'll be able to get enough information from the one year this year to kind of make a call on, on well, if that look, 15 units every second round is, is better than the seven yeah. to eight units like every round? Like Yeah, so look, we'll have the first year's results, Stuart. Um, like any study like this, we need a number of years, years yeah. because, you know, what they say, one, one swallow doesn't make a summer. But, you know, we just need to have the confidence. And look, it's great that we have this started um, and, you know, we will be able to give some guidance and some information. And look, you don't have to skip uh, your nitrogen on the whole farm in, in that rotation. 
you know, you could do it over two rotations. So you could, yeah. you could stick around, bit stick like, around yeah. on one half of the milking platform and then on the other in the, in the next round. And at least by doing that, there's a little bit of, um, I suppose, a, a, a reassurance or there's a bit of a, you know, a safety net there that you're not cutting the nitrogen across the whole platform. Yeah, okay. So I suppose um, in terms of the, the most critical elements of the whole process for you, it's the grazing at that early stage to yeah. get the light and keeping it. And, and those, like the first three rotations post sowing are the most critical element of trying to establish it. Yeah. And it's okay. nearly even more critical than fertilizer usage even. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Stuart, so your first rotation after sowing, so the first grazing, that very low low grazing, low cover grazing is really important. But I would say for the rest of the year, Stuart, you know, trying to get in at that 12, 1400, okay, uh, leaving aside the, fight, the last rotation where, you, mm -hmm. you know, where you've been building cover and your cover is going to be higher than that. But, you know, it's really important in that first year to, um, to um, keep your cover low. Um, you know, again, within reason, because depending on, on your requirements on the farm. But, you know, after that, you need to be measuring grass and you need to be making decisions around the grass availability on the farm in, in terms of, of your wedge so that you, you can see where uh, surpluses are going to develop or where your, your, um, your cover is going to get higher than, than desired. And, you know, making the decisions around that, be it taking out bales or, you know, bringing other stock into graze the platform if that's possible, you know, whatever way. But, you know, you don't want to be, you know, you shouldn't with grass pony swords either, but like certainly with grass clover, you don't want to be going into covers of 1800, 2000, because that's not, that's not doing any part of the sward any good. So, you know, I keep, I keep saying to people, look, if you're, if, if you're, if you're good at gra managing an ordinary grass sward, you'll be able to manage a grass clover sward because the grazing management principles are exactly the same, you know? So like the good thing about clover is it slots into our existing system. It slots into our existing targets, you know, uh, in terms of, of target pre-grazing herbage mass, target post-grazing sward height and so on. It yeah, we don't really have to well change the system. Like There's no change to the yeah. system, but look, you have to be good at managing grass. You know, if you, if you, you know, if you're good at having nice leafy sward there for the cows all year, you'd be well able to manage clover in that. You know, it's just, it's an, clover really complements perennial ryegrass, you know, in terms of lots of things like its growth pattern. So it's not overly productive in the spring when grass grows really fast. Then we get a high um, clover content increases over the spring into the summer, you know, and as grass quality starts to decline there in kind of the June time with heading, clover content is increasing. So it's lifting the quality of what the, of what the cow is eating in that period where we can see a drop in, in grass quality. Um, so look, clover fits very well in. If you can manage grass well, you can manage your, manage your clover. Okay, and I'm shocked that this question hasn't come in yet, but uh, in terms of bloat, I know we yeah. generally don't have a problem on farms in, in Moor Park, but I think there's only one cow has gone down with bloat yeah. in, in, in a good number of years. Um, but at a commercial level, that's a, a major concern for people. Yeah. And of course, bloat ends is after, like, <laughs> nearly like the clover yeah. spray as well. They tried to remove everything that yeah. we had going for us with clover initially. Um, so what do you do to deal with the bloat? Or I suppose maybe it's slightly different in your case because you're trialing it on, yeah. you have a whole clover farmlet now yeah. for it. Like, but yeah. for the people that are going to be transitioning into clover over the next four or five years, is there any thoughts on the on how to manage bloat? Or is it, should it yeah. be something that people should be even concerned about really? like? Look, generally... If you've good grazing management, it's it's not a big concern. Look, I fully appreciate, you know, that farmers are concerned about it because obviously, you know, it can be an expensive issue in the in if you lose a cow or so on. But look, good grazing management and like really important if you are changing between grass only and grass clover swords, or if you're going into a, a clover paddock, even within a clover system where there is a high clover content really important not to have the cows hungry going into the swards. Okay, so, you know, if your cows are hitting four centimetres, they're, you know, they're not working excessively hard to get down below that. That means they're not hungry. So try, try not to have them hungry going into the sward. So don't be grazing below four centimetres. Um, kind of the perfect storm for clover is if you have a leafy grass sward with a lot of clover in it and it's a very wet morning and the cows are very hungry, you know. So a lot of things have to come together to, to, in terms of... Um, having a problem with bloat but you know 
one thing you can do is if you are worried that cows are going into a very um, a, a paddock with a lot of clover in it and you're worried, you know, you, you could put up a three hour wire. And so you're forcing the cows to eat grass as well as clover. Um, and that will that will reduce or almost almost eliminate the risk of bloat. The reason so bloat occurs when um, you get a build up of froth in the in the rumen, and that happens when you have very low dry matter material going into the rumen and not a lot of fiber. And then so cows have to get rid of the gas that's produced in the rumen anyway, regardless of what they're eating, and they do that by burping. But if you have this froth or foam building up in the rumen they just they can't get the gas out and that's what results in bloat so if you can get the cows to eat some um, fiber by, so basically get them to eat the grass rather than just pre preferentially picking the clover you you very much uh, reduce the risk of there being any clover so you know that's what we do in um, Moor Park and the lads in, in Clonakilty do that as well but to be honest George we haven't had to do that for for years um in terms of putting up the uh, a three hour wire, but we, we are careful, you know, we do make sure that the res residuals aren't going below four centimeters. Look in the mid season, the cows don't need to be working hard. You know, the grass is growing so generally, grass grows is above um, demand. So we don't need to make them be working really hard to be grazing down to below four centimeters. And generally, if, if that's our target, you know, they're, they're not going to be hungry going into the next break. So, yeah, okay. you know, uh, there's lots of management things there, you know, and they're simple enough. Um, and most lads are probably hitting that anyway. They're four centimetre residuals, so their risk of bloat is much reduced. But, you know, you do keep an eye on the cows if you, if you think they're going into a paddock um, that has a lot of clover in it. Just check them after milking, because if they're going to get bloat, they're probably going to get it uh, relatively fast after they go out in the paddock. Okay, so like in general, though, it's not something that people should be overly concerned uh, no. about. No, I don't think so, Stuart. And like you said, you know, bloat isn't an issue here and hasn't been for years. As you know, in the eight years of, of the work here, we've lost one cow with bloat. And Fergal is something similar, even I think. Yeah, in exactly. Clan. Yeah. One, in, one in Clan. Yeah, and uh, should like that. Well, I suppose it's definitely, you know, it was bloat, but it could happen anyway. Like, uh, yeah, so you can get bloat on, on a grass ward if yeah. it's lost and there's a high nitrogen content in it, yeah. Yeah, so like the the big problem with it is that preferential grazing of the clover, yeah. so that they, they do like to they, they just yeah. gorge themselves on it. Like, yeah. So I suppose one one thing that I'd say to people if if they find that the cows are bursting into the parlour in the morning or in the evening milking because you've pushed them a bit harder, you know, they're nearly knocking one another to get into to get the bit of meal that's been fed or whatever. That's a good sign that they're <laughs> they're a bit a bit hungry maybe. So you might want to have your three hour wire up at that scenario then really. Yeah, and look, so, if you're feeding a little bit of concentrate in the parlour, that's going to help as well because there is a bit of, of fibre. Fibre in it, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, very good. Um, so I suppose just to, to sum it up, so Deirdre, like um, the growth is really beginning to come at us now. So like you said, there, there some people maybe over towards the east of the country might be getting a little bit concerned about soil moisture deficits, but at the same time, like the further or the you delay this, the closer you're getting to that deficit issue, really. So you'd be better yeah. off moving sooner rather than later, especially for over sowing. Yeah. Um, like reseeding, I suppose, is going to start, it has started to take place. Um, and I suppose it's, it's probably the easier way of establishing it in one yeah. sense, yeah, without a definitely. doubt. So the overall plan for people then, um, like, uh, I think Brian said it there at the dairy conference uh, maybe two years ago. Like the, it, it's it. We're in a tricky phase now over the next four years as we're trying to move from maybe zero clover in a lot of cases or minimal clover into what we're hoping is going to be that twenty percent clover that you said is going to give the benefits in terms of the fixation and the performance of the animal as well. So um, the, the strategy that people need to be employing. So. Like I think Mike is talking about maybe 30% a year between both conventional receding and your over sowing. Mm -hmm. And so that means 120% of the farm is going to be done with clover over the next four years. Yeah. And we're building in that the fallback of not all of the over sowing is going to be a success. And I suppose we have to treat, we have to be, be very clear with people from the outset as well, that that is the case. Don't not all the over sowing is going to be a success yeah. because for like for one reason or another, like you said, the soil moisture deficits might catch people. Um, something mightn't go right for you, and the grazing just might be a little bit delayed or whatever, and it could impact on the performance of it. So the plan is to do thirty percent a year, 
the the simple the easy piece is probably the ten percent for the normal reseeding because it's just as you said, burn it off with glyphosate mm -hmm. and go ahead and get it reseeded. The the trickier bit is probably identifying the paddocks that are suitable now yeah. and and preparing the paddocks for next year. And the other the other thing about the soil fertility from my conversations that I've had bo with both yourself and Mike um, over the last couple of months in it is like the soil fertility, like the pH, like you said, the is is so important to clover like. If you don't really want to be going in with lime today and trying to oversaw clover in the field next mm. week, really, so you don't. You no. actually want to have those fields identified now and maybe be touching them up with lime during the course of the summer so that they're in that positive, good pH position before you actually oversaw. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so there's a few things that people need to get right so that that plan in, of it's not a case of just go out and oversaw the whole farm. There, the soil fertility has to be got right, and in reality, it needs to be got right in advance. So yeah. if there's a P and K issue that needs to be dealt with, it needs to be dealt with. But the lime is probably one of the most critical things, really, is it, in terms of yeah. helping yeah. the establishment yeah. of it, like. So you know, if if you if you've identified paddocks um, and you have to manage them in terms of um, you have to manage them in terms of weed control. Well, you know, at the same time, you can be getting your soil fertility rate as well, because, you know, you want to give the clover every chance to establish. And if you're going to be starting off with everything not right, you know, either it has a challenge from weeds or it has a challenge from low soil pH or, you know, there isn't adequate P and K available in the soil, you're starting on the back foot already. So, you know, take, you know, if you're not going to be able to oversaw this year for whatever reason, you know, take, um, take this, as an opportunity to start preparing. So maybe select your paddocks that you want to oversaw next year. You'll have your soil fertility results, have a look at them, see what you need to do with them. Check, look at the weed content, do you need to spray them? You know, if you, if you, if you use post-emergent spray on a reseed, you probably won't need to reseed them. you will probably, probably be okay. But you know, if you're a bit concerned about the docks or any other weeds that are in it, go ahead and treat them as well this year. You know, and you'll be well set up then for next year. Um, and look, I think we all need to, to start planning. And like you said, Stuart, either reseeding or oversowing, you know, whichever method you use, you know, just be prepared and, you know, be prepared to manage it once the, once the seed starts to establish. And look, a lot of people think that, you know, oh, should the clover is going to disappear after three or four or five years anyway. You know, look, we've swards in Moor Park that are in their ninth year since they were sown and we haven't oversowed those and the clover content in those is still hitting the 20 percent so you know and all we can put that down to is good grazing management and the soil fertility is right in those paddocks they're index three uh for peas and some of them are so they're either three or four then for k's okay their ph is 6.3 or more um they're grazed nine to ten times a year depending on the year um we do the things that I said there, we graze down to four centimetres, we graze to three and a half where we can in the first and last rotation. We don't leave very high covers get, build up on them. We do take bales of silage off them if we need to. We don't take heavy cuts of silage Crops, off yeah. them just because they're not part of the silage ground. But we have other ground, you know, and it's four or five years there and we've taken first cut silage off them, you know, probably for four years. Um, and their clover content would still be very happy with, with it in those. And look, clover content does fluctuate a little bit year to year. And sometimes in the spring, it looks really low and you're like, oh, geez, there's, there's, there's no clover God. there. I'm going to be in butter. But hit this time in April, you know, soil temperature is increasing um, and the clover starts to come. So, you know, soil temperature is really important around clover. Firstly, it doesn't grow at soil temperatures below eight degrees. So that's why if we have a very cold spring, you won't see a whole lot of clover in the sward. But it's also important when it's sown for um, germination and establishment, you need to be over that eight, eight degrees. So look, the, you know, clover, if, if it's sown, uh, well, it establishes, it can persist once it's managed. Um, and look, take the opportunity now to either start putting the clover in or getting your swords ready to put it in next year. But we, I think, you know, given the pressures that are on farming for a whole variety of reasons, you know, clover is definitely a good option. It's not going to solve all our problems, you know, in terms of environmental sustainability, but it's going to help us a lot along the way without penalising our, our farmers in terms of their production, uh, milk solids and herbage production. So a good question that I was just actually going to say to you as well from Alan Poole in Wexford there. How do you estimate the percentage of clover in this ward? Because he says within their own discussion group walks, the estimates can vary widely. Like what's the best way of... 
get yeah, your eye so in on it. Th this, that's a very good question because it is hard to know how much clover is in the sward. As a rule of thumb, very rough. If you think there's 50% clover in the sward, there's probably 25%. <laughs> okay. Uh, clover has a lower dry matter than grass, maybe 1% to 2% lower. But also, you know, because it has, you know, the bigger leaves, the trifolium leaves, it looks like it's taking up more space in the sward. So, you know, roughly half. Now, uh, totally separate to this, we, we are working on a project through Vista Milk, where we're hoping to develop um, an app to... Um, estimate clover content so you know it's a few years away yet but like that you'll be able to walk out into the paddock take a photo on your mobile phone and it'll it'll tell you uh how much clover is in the sward and i think that'll be really beneficial um for farmers we have some preliminary work done on that from one time point and, and we're seeing good estimation from image analysis in terms of um clover content but we're you know we're away we're a while away from getting that uh, uh, working on our mobile phone you know it's we're doing proof of concept at the moment but we're going to be we're start we have started now this year um a bigger program to to try and look at clover right across the year in gray swords excellent very good so i suppose we didn't go into the actual establishment methods i suppose Deirdre, we might come back to covering that maybe yeah. another day maybe yeah yeah um yeah. so just i suppose to get, get it into people's heads about the plan really is the main thing from today to like to, to set out the ground in front of them and most important thing from my perspective anyway and i'm sure you think the same way is that people don't set themselves up for the fall with it yeah. so if if they think about it now where is going to be suitable to do it this year? And as you said, maybe there isn't some, there may, may not be ground. Now you'd mm. expect that there will be something on most farms that people will be able to uh, oversaw. And obviously the normal reseeding will give you the opportunity to bring in stuff um, straight away. But to, not to, to get everything in place before we leap right in, I suppose, because the temptation is there to just go and do it. And if we haven't conditions right, it, it is going to fail and people are going to have a sour taste in their mouth basically yeah. as a result of it. So, yeah. look, I think uh, that was a very, very useful uh, conversation today, Deirdre. Thanks very much for taking your time to talk to us. And uh, um, we'll leave it at that for today and wish everybody well for the week. It's uh, going to be a good week, so take advantage of it, I suppose, in every sense. And yeah. uh, everybody take care and stay safe in the meantime. And we'll talk to you again next week.